and speaks to wealth, which speaks to education, you know, so how everything, how everything is tied and how we can address, how I can address all that aspects of that in my personal um, and whatever other capacities that I have. So do you think capitalist, wealthy, white families like the Ruperts should give, give away their land, give away their money? Yes. All right. I feel that I don't have to apologize because I personally did not take part in apartheid. And in my heart, so I feel So can we sorry. say no? Yeah, I feel you don't sorry feel for each and every person that was um, disadvantaged by apartheid. But oh, you can't say that young people today still have to apologize. We also want to... I don't think anyone's just asking for an apology. I think that happened with the TRC. So, Juan Elisa. You know, you know, Mr. Chaba, I'm sitting as a black, poor, dispossessed woman in this country and having to listen to Monique saying she's not guilty. But I'm living under white supremacy right now. And we, we, we skip away of the violence of white supremacy because we, we talk about the township, we talk about poverty as, as things that are, that, are, that are, it's just irrelevant. That lady's story is so powerful because it's the story of my mother, it's my story, it's, it's the story of every black person in this room who has been dispossessed, who lives under violence every day in this country. So I'm sorry, Sarah, I don't want you to live in ways that, that, that you want to give back the land because I want to take back the land because for me psychologically it's very important that I take back the land you don't give it back to me because it was taken back forcefully under, under colonialism so I want to decolonize this country and maybe if it means that the, an army of black people in this country take arms in order to do that then maybe it needs to happen but I'm tired of these I'm tired of these debates but, I'm tired of these but debates. is that progressive or regressive do we need to have war for that to happen? I don't think so. What do you think? When you've taken the land back, when you've taken the land back, make sure you give it to the rightful owners in terms of the truth. Give it to the Koi and the Sun people there. Yes! They are the rightful owners. If you want to take back the land, give it to the rightful owners. But you see, the problem is this. So are you saying that black people are also not the rightful owners of this land? If the black people are the rightful owners, where did they get the land? Is when that they, what you're saying? No, no, no. History is much more complicated than that. Much more complicated. And we can go and have a look at that. But it's a myth. It's a myth to just claim that everything belonged to this, no, but nothing belonged to that. It's a myth. If people start talking about war, we are in a very, very dangerous situation. It's very easy to incite violence. You don't know what you're talking about, and I would suggest that we all move away from wait, that. Wait, 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 wait a second. Hold on a that. second. And luckily, luckily I know that the majority of people in this country from different communities are not interested in violence, they are not interested in conflict and war. Those are side elements that should not be allowed to destroy the fabric of social cohesion in this country. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Social cohesion. Um, if you want my land, you can come and take it right now. I've never owned any land anywhere, ever. I'd like to make a proposal, though. Right? In, in all these debates, a, lo a lot of people forget Right, that our government actually owns almost half of all the land in no, South Africa. No, that's not true. Don't lie. Don't lie. At national, at national, don't lie, don't lie. At you're lying. You're lying. At national and you're provincial level, lying. it's twenty-four percent, and at at, at municipal level, we don't really know, but you're it's estimated about twenty-five percent. All right, let's let him finish. Also, also also, the government owns a lot of national assets in terms of state-owned enterprises, right? And a lot. It's not only the big guys, right? That, why would the government need to own a diamond mine, right? Now, the government could, in a very short order, right, make a huge dent in economic inequality. I'm not saying it's going to solve all the problems, right? But make a huge difference, right, by giving that back to the people. Right. It used to belong to the apartheid government, now it belongs to the ANC government. Right. Go, go along with the Freedom Charter, say let the people own these national assets. Right. They did that with Telcom. They did that with Telcom to an extent. All right. Okay. <laughs> Henny, are we destined for war? I don't think we should wish for war. I think, Mr. Chaba, we speak easily about it and I understand our frustration, but I think we must, in respecting those who fought for our freedom and who have fallen, we shouldn't wish this thing back upon us. But equally, mu equally must, and it is our freedom for all of us and a responsibility to act 
And I, and I say equally for white people to act responsibly. And while we talk about the land issue, and it is fundamental, I think equally we have to talk about our economy. We have to say every year about 300 billion rand leaves this, this country in capital that very wealthy people own, which they move offshore. It's a fundamentally unpatriotic act that happens of undermining the future of this country. It's that which we need to equally hold responsible to say to those who have money that we are going to look at ways in which that money must be reinvested in the future of all of our people. All right. Thank you very much. We're going to take a short break. When we return, the final the big debate on racism, inequality and white privilege. South Africa is certainly more divided than ever. What will it take to create a real non-racist society? I think it's very important for us not to individualize this issue because I do think that, that one, uh, we are already in an incredibly um, polarized um, uh, condition at the moment over the past few, that's been rising over the past few years. So the thing is, we are in a situation of contestation. Let's keep up that political contestation around ideas. What are the best models? What are the, the best ways to dismantle whiteness, dismantle white privilege, and, and, and look at, and, and, but to throw out the constitution in the process, to say we need a war to, 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 to fix this, I think is, is actually um, uh, not, not, um, not actually giving credence to the lives that were lost, to the very hard battles that were fought I think we need to understand that there is no vehicle in this country that is being used to drive social cohesion. Uh, apartheid fell after the clerk had a whites-only referendum, after the sports movement was crippled in this country. I think we need to look at a vehicle that can drive us forward. Roads must fall indeed, but there's lots of other things that need to fall along with it. When land was violently taken from black people, it was taken as a resource to, to life, to access to life. When 35,000 families own 80% of the land in South Africa, they own the economy of South Africa. The struggle towards um, building a new country that is black because South Africa is first and foremost a black country that should portray African values. That struggle should only be led by black people. I incidentally don't share the idea that the problem that we're dealing with here is whiteness. It's capitalism. The deal that was signed uh, at Codessa was calculated to preserve the ownership of the commanding heights of the economy, the banks, the mines, the big commercial farms and so forth, in the hands of the capitalist class. The basis of that agreement was that ways would be opened for the aspirant black elite represented by the ANC to be given some crumbs in the form of BEE, as I think Mwilet Simbeki in his book about, about the subject has so eloquently explained. I'm not interested, by the way, in a society in which we are ruled by black billionaires instead of white billionaires. We do not want any kind of billionaires at all, so that the wealth of this country is owned and controlled by the overwhelming majority. We don't want, we don't want equality of poverty. What we want is equality of wealth. Steve Biko questioned whether there would be space for all of us at the rendezvous of victory. And the thing is that there can be space for all of us, but the onus is on white South Africans to recognize their unearned privilege, to realize that white racism is self-destructive, and to commit themselves to use the power they have to advance transformation. It's a decision that white South Africans have to make. And unless they make the right decision, they are endangering themselves and there's no one else to blame. Uh, it's been very disturbing to hear comments like, how disempowered am I really if I'm able to go to an institution of higher learning? Firstly, you do not know the cost at, that which, at which that came. Black kids have to go and prove how poor they are just to get a loan from NASFAS. And then you are not poor enough. So you still can't pay your loans, you need to. So that was very disturbing. And secondly, you cannot continue to tell us that education is the key and not the land when black graduates are standing on the street corners with signs. You're watching The Big Debate. When we come back... I'm an optimist, I'm a positive person, and I think 
that we still have wonderful things to achieve in South Africa, but we have to celebrate our diversity. Together we can make a success of this country. I'm committed to do so, and I think the majority of our people will do the same. <laughs> Lovelin. I think that in as much as the systems of oppression have, benefit pe have benefited people at a group level, I think that at a group level people have a responsibility of undoing those systems. And so when people say, what must white people do to undo their white privilege, it needs to be a very deliberate daily action. It means paying your workers better, it means respecting black people, it means not talking down to black people, it means, you know, allowing and even, you know, reducing the amount of space you take so that other black people can just feel human and dignified in a space. Mm. It has to be deliberate and I think this conversation is not going to end until it's deliberate and until white people are as uncomfortable in their own skin as black South Africans have been. Sarah. I really just want to echo those statements that it's an active process of working towards disrupting whiteness, to, of working towards decolonization, um, and that no white South African should feel comfortable in their skin. I mean, who cares what I think, really? I think that the most important decisions in this country are not mine to make, and that the sooner white South Africans realize this is a black country, the better. I believe, as I said, inequality is unacceptable, must be changed. I think racism must be rooted out. I think intolerance, as I've seen in this debate, must also be rooted out. And I do think that if we take the Constitution and we take the Freedom Charter, that the land belongs to everyone who lives in it, white and black, we can go forward. Thank you. All right. The thing is, if you antagonize different groups and different races, right, this is only going to go one way and that's going to end up in war. Right? Now, there, there are solutions, there are ways of uh, dealing with this, and the government can make a huge dent in inequality simply by uh, its own policy towards state-owned enterprises, mm -hmm. towards state-owned land, uh, and how, for that matter, it regulates business. Thank you. We have seen the war in Syria, what it does, and I strongly discourage those who think it will solve the problems of South Africa by us fighting amongst a civil law amongst us South Africans. Thank you. Um, I think the, the, the discussions around not inciting war are, are, very, are, are based on an, an not understanding um, how uh, the concentration camps, currently known as townships, are actually war zones. There's an urgency uh, for for black people to be able to breathe in their own country in their own land that and and that's a necessary process that needs to happen and and decolonization uh, on a structural level the economy education um, medicine everything needs to happen in this country and 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 you know if foundations like the declare foundation by criminalizing uh, young people who are angry who can't breathe who are in so much pain in a, in a violent system is only just as this gentleman behind me had said it's just speeding up that process. Thank you. Abraham? Land restitution is important. Uh, economic redress is important. Uh, you can't just say, as long as you overthrow capitalism, then you'll have uh, you know, attained total societal transformation. That level of reductionism actually makes nonsense of a very complex uh, project that, that, that you're involved in. That's not cool. What, what potentially makes nonsense of our democratic project must be the concentration of power in the hands of small groups of people. Ultimately, I think that is what the fight against racism ultimately is about. And equally, what the fight against the ownership of the economy in the hands of very few people is about. So I think for us to be able to look at a future as a country, it has to be to dealing with uh, economic inequality and, and dealing with a power that very, very few people have in our country uh, and the dispossession that that results in. Thank you, Henny. I think it is very important to keep on with this debate and to keep it honest and frank. So, um, yeah, so everybody should be heard and everybody's views should be respected. I strongly believe that education is a crisis in this country and that will help to dissolve inequality. So there is 80% of schools in South Africa is dysfunctional and that is um, unacceptable. Thank you very much.
Well